One thing I need to cover is that HDCP is not supported on all Series 1 uh, DCI projectors. It came in at a later date. It's been supported by the TI engine. Now, if you have a Christie M or ZX range, they have Christie's own implementation uh, of HDCP, so all those ones are supported. However, the other, the other part of the Christie range or the large projectors, um, you need to check. Um, Christy sent me some information on that because uh, I've asked, I asked both of the, I asked Christy and NEC, the, the two that we actually deal with through my, one of my partner companies uh, about how we detect this. Um, Christy was very kind to send us, and send me a documentation uh, which I'll put under this video in the blog uh, of how to, to detect this on those other larger projectors as a tool or there's some also you can actually identify it by looking at the, the cinema boards in the TI engine. Um, so that, that'll be there. I'm still waiting on, on NEC to come back with some information and, and probably I'll talk to Barco about that too and if I get the information I'll place it in this entry under the, in, in, the, in the blog. Now, if HDCP is not supported, then, well, you know, a lot of issues will happen. If you're trying to get a satellite feed through a satellite box, it may not work. Um, Blu-ray players, etc., DVD players that are using uh, HDMI or DVI out probably will not work. Um, uh, so there's a lot of issue, issues with that. Um, so you need to be aware. Now, now let's talk quickly about why is it important to know what you can plug into a DCR projector? I've already sort of glossed over it, but um, predominantly, and the, one of the driving forces at the moment here in Australia, there's a lot of um, real-time real satellite content starting to, to show up in those services, and a lot of uh, cinemas uh, who have got the DCI equipment have got the beautiful picture on screen, but are having problems getting those... Um, pictures from the satellite, etc., onto the screen. And that's mainly because satellites output 1080i, which, as I showed you before, aren't supported in Series 1. But I hear it should be supported in Series 2, but that's next year sometimes. So if you've got one of these Series 1 projectors and you want to do this, well, your main um, path forward would be to buy some sort of scan converter, which would take the 1080i and turn it into 1080p, bang into the projector and there you go. Um, so that's what sort of people have been looking at. Now also I've had a few people ask in terms of what you want to do. Uh, some are asking I want to do a presentation. I've got this beautiful picture projector. Can the presenter get his picture through the projector? Well as I showed you in the frequencies again, yes he can but you have to set up everything exactly right. Um, in some ways a lot of um, the theatres I've seen who have needed to do that have usually, because it's problematic uh, and they're usually in a hurry, tend to drop a data projector in there just for the presentation. But it's good to know that you can do it and if you need to do it or are going to do it on a regular basis that you can set it up. Uh, and, and finally, um, the, the problem here is uh, uh, the satellite stuff. Now, uh, this has become a bigger an issue and as you understand one of my companies is a development company and we develop technology for cinema. Uh, we've got one of the most well-known uh, respected e-cinema players uh, for, for cinema and that's for alternative content and this need we've decided to, to up, up the ante on that feature set and we're coming out with a, a, a new, new product for that in conjunction with that or separate depends on what you need and uh, it's to make the satellite distribution systems much easier. As you know, um, uh, it's a, nice to have a satellite feed coming into, an, into a theatre, but that's one, th one, one feed sitting in a box somewhere in, in your complex. Now, you want to get that image onto which screen? You know, it becomes problematic to feed that image to any screen. You can put it probably onto your one main screen, but if you need to send it to another screen or multiple screens, it just becomes too hard. So the way uh, to approach this and coming out of product with that is that you'll be able to buy boxes. Uh, so one or more boxes, you might have satellite A box here, satellite B box here, terrestrial C box there. 
and they will all be getting uh, real-time feeds from whatever source uh, you care to, to attach to. And these boxes will be attached to your network. And therefore, all you need then is you need uh, an eCinema box, like one of our cheap ones, or we actually make the software so it can be imported onto other eCinema boxes. Uh, and you just go to that, you go to the channel that you want, and you say, okay, I want to watch um, NFL final or the, the grand final in Australia, for example. And you, you check that with the QC station and make sure that's all going. Then you go to any cinema in your complex. Uh, it has to be networked, of course. And you go to uh, the eCinema box and you go bang and it's on your DCI screen at amazing quality directly or digital path through and it looks fantastic. Now that product's going to be coming out from us for my development arm and pushed out to our, our um, OEMs or the people who deal with us later on this year and we're just prototyping and testing it over the next couple of weeks. And that's the sort of future of, of a lot of the alternative content. Um, I'm a big believer that um, as a, a venue that sh shows content in the best possible um, manner, you know, best environment, best lighting, best you know, seating, etc., big screen, that um, DCI is good and JPEG 2000 for the distribution of uh, feature content, uh, all the security, etc. Definitely fantastic. It's the way we're going. That's what we're going to be doing. But we're also going to be doing alternative content, be it distributed e-cinema, files, or real-time live satellite distribution of content, even in possibly in 3D. Uh, I just talk about, you know, imagine the um, World Cup on 3D all around the world. It'd be huge. And, you know, uh, we say that an opportunity and we want to make that happen uh, much easier for the cinema owner and uh, make it easy for him to, to adapt it to his location without spending a lot of money or, or and things like that. So look out for that um, in the next uh, six months or less. Um, and uh, thanks for watching this episode. Uh, I hope to have more episodes soon. Um, just with this new product's keeping me very busy and also um, my wife's pregnant again, so that's really good too and that's been keeping me um, busy in the morning sickness and everything. So um, thanks for watching and uh, keep an eye out. Just a reminder, I will put uh, information in the blog entry on Cine Tech Geek for this video that pertains to um, how to detect if your Series 1 DCI projector has HDCP installed or not and more information if you need to know on, the, on that. Um, but good luck uh, with uh, uh, your alternative content, and until next time, this is James Gardner for CineTech Geek.